I want to thank you all for tuning in to this celebrity edition of Black Friday Live. I'm your host, Keith Scott. Well, joining us today on this celebrity edition by Skype, all the way in the NYC, educator, composer, jazz musician, and vibraphonist, Mr. Stefan Harris. How we doing, Stefan? Man, life is good, my brother. I can't complain at all. Man, I can't complain. It's kind of cold up here, but you know, I'm gonna let uh, that go. <laughs> man, it's cold everywhere right about now, man. We got an Arctic blast. But man, I know my viewers are excited. We're excited about you coming here to the Alamo City. Tell my viewers a little bit about this journey, man, as a jazz musician. And I'm gonna go into this, Stefan, because I, I was told that you could play over 20 instruments. Yeah, I was busy as a little kid, but it kept me out of trouble playing all those instruments. But you know, the, a, a life in jazz has been absolutely amazing for me. It's given me the opportunity to travel all around the world several times over, and I've grown so much as a man because jazz is an art form that is ultimately all about empathy. It's all about how a group of people can be completely different from one another, put forth their unique, authentic perspectives and find connections between them. So I've, I've not only become a, a better musician over the years, but I've learned how to become a better father, a better husband, a better friend as a result of playing this art form. Man, it's kind of kept you well-rounded, huh? Absolutely. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a blessing. And I think this is an art form that could have only been created in the United States. Yeah, well, I want to rewind the clock a little bit and go back to your childhood, learning how to play all of these different instruments. Did you have any idea that that was going to be the gyra that you were going to pick as a musician? No, you know, my mother's a Pentecostal minister. So I grew up in the black church and hearing music being used to amplify the narrative of people's lives. So like Sister Johnson would just stand up and start talking about what was going on in her life. And all of a sudden, the organ would just come in and everybody would get emotional. So I always thought of music first as emotion had nothing to do with styles. But then I started to learn uh, classical music. And then I, eventually, when I got to college, I started to learn more about jazz. But having that foundation in gospel music really set the tone for the rest of my life in terms of understanding that ultimately music is about connecting with people and bringing people together. Yeah, so so you know you were you were getting groomed at an early age. Oh yeah, oh yeah. My now, brother played a bunch of bitch too, so it's in my family. My father, my my uh, grandfather, was actually a very successful radio DJ. His name was Pee Wee Harris, one of the first DJs to bring uh, black music to the radios in upstate New York. So he also helped book the Chitlin Circus. So he booked people like James Brown and John Coltrane to go from New York all the way up to Montreal. So there's something in my blood, man. I'm just appreciative and enjoying this journey so far. Yeah, it's kind of been passed down. But you know, I had to do my research now, you know, off the camera, off the set, we were talking about Roy Ayers as a, playing the xylophones. I'm a kid growing up listening to Roy Ayers, listening to jazz, you know, some of my greats, Lonnie Liston Smith, the Crusaders, mm -hmm. but I'm familiar with the xylophone. Man, can you educate us on this vibraphone? Yeah, I mean, so the xylophone is uh, it's made of wooden bars that are over these long tubes. So a lot of people have seen the xylophone it's been used in cartoons and a lot of orchestra music. The vibraphone, first of all, is much sexier than that. <laughs> it's, got, <laughs> it's, got, it's got golden bars, uh, and inside of the tubes, it has like a little cap that spins. So it actually makes a vibrato like a human voice, like a singer. Um, and you know, another interesting thing about this instrument is it's one of the only instruments created in the United States. The saxophone and the violin, those are German instruments. Instruments like the drum set, the electric bass, the vibraphone were cr created right here in the United States. So it's a, it's a beautiful instrument. One of the things I love about it, besides its tone, I love how physically beautiful it is. When you watch someone play the vibraphone, you literally see them dancing the music, and it increases the artist's ability to tell a story to the audience. Well, yeah, I'm glad you had to educate us on that because I saw you playing it. And it was a very interesting, sexy, wasn't like the xylophones. No, no, we don't do the xylophone. <laughs> yeah, that vibraphone is really interesting. But you also play something, you know, educate us on this, uh, what is it, marimba? Yeah, the marimba. So the marimba is... Marimba, is, yeah. 
Yeah, it's ancestor. It's a balafone. So when you look, you see a lot of uh, African nations have these little small xylophones. So the marimba is kind of an extension of, of that tradition. Um, I believe it was probably created in Guatemala. Um, it's actually the national instrument of Costa Rica. Some random facts I'm sharing with you. <laughs> but I yeah. love the marimba because it has more of that organic African feel. So a lot of times when I'm playing melodies to a song, I'll play on the vibraphone because it's so beautiful and lush and fluid. But then when I'm ready to really throw down with the drums and really rock and put some energy into the music, I tend to switch to the marimba because it has a more organic feel to me. So I use both of them on stage. In fact, I, I actually sometimes play them both at the same time. I put my left hand on the marimba, right hand on the vibraphone and start mixing the sounds together. Yeah, yeah, showing some skills on that one. Well, yeah, you yeah. know what? It's interesting because you're really unique in the jazz industry in that in that world as far as gyro when we talk about jazz. But you got nominated for a Grammy for, for your contemporary jazz album. Tell us a little bit, man, about that Grammy nomination and that project. Well, we, we've actually gotten nominated for four Grammys now, and it's with my group, Blackout. And the thing about uh, jazz, from our perspective, is it's not really a style. Jazz is really like a tool to amplify the voices of the people. So the way that I grew up hearing gospel music, hearing R&B, soul music, we never apologize. That's a part of what we do when we play music. So it's never about one style. Whatever we bring to the table is all acceptable. It's all an essential part of the creative process. So when we create music, sometimes it's hard to put us into any genre at all. <laughs> so yeah. we ended up getting uh, nominated for a Best Contemporary Jazz Album because of all the different influences that, that we have. And again, yeah. it's called Black and you're going to be bringing Black out here. Uh, we're going to talk about you at the Carver this weekend, the Carver Community Cultural Center. But your group, Black out, you guys are touring all over the country. I know you've been all over the world, like you said. Man, what's coming up in 2019 for Stefan Harris and Black out? What you got um, cooking? Well, I mean, it's the, the new record that we have is called Sonic Creed, and it spent uh, seven weeks straight in the number one slot and radio. It's in the top 10 for 18 weeks straight in radio. It's still in the top 10 right now since it's been released from day one. So the record is selling well. It's really got a great buzz. So we're going to stay on the road. I mean, I you know I run a college program, so I'm here yeah. in New York, but tomorrow morning I'm getting on the flight to San Francisco. Next day I'm in LA. So we're making the rounds, doing what we can to share the power and beauty of this art form with as many people as we possibly can. Yeah, and that art form, because you released a new album in 2018, correct? That's right. So Sonic Creed is the name of that album. Yeah, Sonic Creed. Tell us a little bit about, you know, some of those projects on that on that LP. So Blackout, the band, we, we talk about uh, why we make music. And ultimately, we make music to tell the stories of our people. And given the current political climate that we're in, and we felt yeah. that there were narratives about African-Americans in particular that weren't actually accurate. We know that we come from a, a, a history of beautiful kings and queens and, and all types of people. So we decided we were going to create a, a, an album that celebrated our icons, that celebrated our elders, that celebrated black excellence, which is why we call the album Sonic Creed. So each of the cuts on the album is attributed to someone that we had direct life experience with. So there's like a Horace Silver song on the album, but that's because when we used to play in LA, Horace Silver, when he was with us, would come and see us play. And we would get to hang out and talk to this American icon, this tribute to Abby Lincoln. I got to spend time with Abby Lincoln. Bobby Hutcherson, I got to spend time and perform with them. So it's all about the direct life experience of elders and what they passed on to our generation. And we're amplifying that, celebrating the beauty of our of our ancestors. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. You know, uh, music with a message. I love it. Message in the music, huh? That's right. That's right. That's what the music is for. <laughs> it's supposed to have a message in it. Some of this music today, though, we... we... <laughs> oh, there's a message in all of it. The question is, what's the message? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> 
Well, you and Blackout are going to be here this weekend at the Carver Community Cultural. But before we talk about that, man, you grew up, you know, playing all of these instruments. And I'm quite sure, you know, listening to jazz, who are some of the artists? And I know you've been on the stage with a lot of different artists. Who are some of the artists in the jazz, you know, genre that inspired you? Well, I mean, I think of inspiration not just from a historic perspective. Some people who listen to records, but I find inspiration from the people who helped groom me as a man. So okay. I think of people like the great Max Roach. I got to play with Max Roach and I learned a bunch from him. He would sit me down and school me about life and business all the time. I played with the great Wynton Marcellus, the great Joe Henderson, uh, Cassandra Wilson, Buster Williams. These are all people who have mentored me throughout my life. And uh, I, I consider the people that I've had direct contact with the primary influences artistically. Now. I'm a huge fan of Stevie Wonder. I'm just going to put that out there. Okay. <laughs> I can't get enough of Stevie. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. But let me ask you a question because I know you got a day job too, as well as an inspiring musician and jazz artist. But is this your alma mater that you're back at the School of Manhattan? That's right. I graduated from here in such and such a year. We don't have to talk about that. A couple years ago, <laughs> my undergraduate degree was actually in classical music uh, because I didn't really start playing jazz until I got to college. And I have a master's degree uh, from Manhattan School of Music and Jazz. And I'm now the dean and director of the jazz arts department here. Yeah, let's talk about that because you're the dean and the director when we talk about, you know, in, in that school, your alma mater. What are some of the things that you're doing in educating those kids as the director and dean at the School of Manhattan? Well, the vision of the art department is directly connected to what we see the purpose of of art to be in our society. Like what is the value of art? The value of art from our perspective is to make sure that every voice is heard in the greater community. You can't really understand yourself as a people if you don't understand and hear from all the elements that make you whole. So part of the role of an artist is to go out and to tell the stories that are that they're directly seeing in their world that they're directly influenced by. So our philosophy is not about teaching one style of music. Our job is to give students the tools that they need to tell whatever story in whatever genre they choose. Jazz just happens to be one of the greatest art forms in terms of storytelling. So we, we begin with a foundation of jazz, but whatever my students choose to do after they leave this building, as long as they're of service to the community and they're honest and authentic, I'm happy and proud of them. Yeah, it, it, it must be a really a cool, great feeling to go back to your alma mater and just, you know, making an impact at that university. That's right. And, you know, the other thing about Manhattan School of Music that uh, sometimes gets lost, we're actually in Harlem. We are located uptown in the birthplace of modern jazz. All the great icons in jazz, Langston Hughes and Ralph Ellis and all the great writers, the great thinkers were a part of this community. So we're blessed to be right here in the heart of one of the most important cultural movements that ever happened on this planet, the Harlem Renaissance. Wow, isn't that interesting? Right in Harlem, huh? Uptown. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, for my viewers, Stefan, you're going to be here this weekend at the Carver Community Cultural Center on February 2nd. Doors are going to be opening up at 8 p.m. Man, now let me ask you a question about this photo, bro. It, it, man, you haven't aged a bit. What was this photo taken, man? Because I thought you, I thought you sent us a young photo or something, man, when you was in high school. No, no, man. That's just a couple of months ago. It's that treadmill, bro. <laughs> Good eating that treadmill. <laughs> man, you don't look like you aged a bit, man. I saw this photo and I said, Stefan said that. Now, nah, come on now. <laughs> but it's you for real. That's so, man, tell, tell my viewers, how can they stay connected with you and what Stefan Harris and what Blackout is doing? How can my viewers stay connected with you? Well, the best way to find out what we're involved with is to go to StefanHarris.com. And the, other, the interesting thing about the website is it covers a lot of the different areas that I'm involved in. So there's areas where it talks about what I'm doing in education. I also have an app company 
So I'm an app developer. So there's a segment that talks about that. I do corporate training, leadership training. Uh, so there's areas on the website that highlight some of that where I'm going into major corporations and teaching leadership techniques based on jazz and how we improvise and how we make decisions to bring out the best in one another. So it's that's the best way to find out the variety of things that we're involved with, in addition to scheduling, of course, and all of our albums are on there. Man, you're a busy guy. You, you know, a <laughs> dean, running your own company, traveling all over the country. Sounds like life is good. Life is very good. And I got two beautiful children and a beautiful wife, so I'm incredibly grateful. Well, Stefan, man, keep up the great work. You're making an impact in the jazz industry and that gyra. And I want to thank you for taking the time out to talk to us here, right here on this celebrity edition of Black Friday Live. Man, I appreciate you, brother. Now, listen, you showed that suit in the photo. Now I can't rock that suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. They want to see you in it anyway. You can rock it. You can get away with it. I got something else in the car. <laughs> I'm quite sure you do. Stefan Harris, jazz musician. He just educated us. Vibraphonus. You can see him right here at the Carver Community Cultural Center Saturday, February 2nd. Doors open up at 8 p.m., man. Keep up the great work and let's stay connected so our viewers can know where you're at and what's going on with you in Blackout, Stefan. All right. Thank you, my brother. Be well. All right. Be encouraged, my brother. I'm Keith Scott on this Celebrity Edition with Stefan Harris. We'll see you next time on this Celebrity Edition. As always, be encouraged.